first of all, uh, thanks to the organizer for giving me the opportunity to present my work here. So, so uh, the people involved in this work are so obviously me, Ritu Korno from ISC, and then my supervisor Chandan Dasgupta from ISC, Madan Rao from NCBS, Pina Kishodri from IMSC, and Pranav Jati Bhunia, my senior from ISC. So here is the outline of my talk. I'll briefly discuss what is active matter, what is glass, and how one can try to sort of identify what the glass transition is happening, and what is the motivation of studying active glass, then our models, and I will conclude. So I will not go into the detail of like uh, what should be the accurate definition of active matter, what is the accurate definition of glass. So all the definition I will use is very naive. If you want very detailed answer, you can ask this question. So, so what is active matter? So for me, it's like a system that can convert stored or ambient energy into systematic motion. So there are two examples. One is fish, which can use its own energy stored in its inside its body, and this is showing some systematic motion. And these are Janus colloids, which are non-living, but this is also showing very interesting motions. So the uh, thing is, these systems are out of equilibrium and they are self-propelled. Next thing is what is glass? So let's look at these movies. So if you take a monodispersed liquid, if you pull it down, it will form a crystal. So in uh, but if you take a polydispersed liquid, and you, if you do the same exercise, you will get a solid, but this solid is not ordered, so it's not a crystal. And for our purpose, we call it a glass. It's a disordered solid. But this is a qualitative definition. How one can arrive at a quantitative measure? So this is the way we define glass transition. So we look at MSD as a function uh, of time, and it shows some initial ballistic regime and then a diffusive regime at high temperature. And then as one decreases the temperature, it shows some plateau-like behavior, which is because of intermediate caging of particles by its neighbor. And then at uh, long time, again, it shows diffusion. Now, if one extracts the long time diffusion constant for all this temperature and plot them, one can see the diffusion constant is going to zero at some, so this is the extrapolated behavior. And uh, like, if you fit it properly, one can get an estimate of a temperature where the diffusion should go to zero. Similarly, if you look at a liquid, uh, the density fluctuates at any local scale. Now, if we look at the density fluctuation and how it relaxes, then one can again get a time scale at high temperature, which is small, and if you reduce the temperature, then the relaxation becomes slower. So if you plot the relaxation time and again fit it with a proper uh, functional form, which is known as VFT form, one can again get a temperature, and this temperature is closed. So the main message from here is that and the relaxation of a liquid and how it increases, from that one can predict the glass transition temperature. Now this is Kovenderson. And so the main uh, point I should um, request you to focus is that from this kind of data one can get two things. One is the transition temperature. Another thing is fragility. So many people talked about fragility. So fragility is the sensitivity with respect to temperature. That is when you decrease the temperature, how uh, fast the viscosity is increasing. So I will summarize the behavior of the glassy system or the features of a glassy system. It's before the glass transition, it shows caging and caging kind of behavior of the particles. That's why you saw the plateau-like behavior in the MSD. And it has a finite glass transition temperature. It has a fragility. If the fragility is very less or close to zero, one call it a strong glass. If the fragility is very high, one call it a fragile glass. And then it also shows dynamical heterogeneity. People talked about it many in many talks. Uh, so what is this? If you look at a liquid at high temperature, you will see that the dynamics everywhere in the system is almost, uh, almost similar. So the, in terms of dynamics, it is homogeneous. But close to the glass transition, the dynamics, some part of the system is very different from other parts. So this is a plot from a simulation where people have plotted the vectors of the displacement in a 2D glass. And you can see in some regions the vectors are big, in some regions the vectors are small. This is from experimenter where people colored these particles according to the speed. So blue is slower particle, red is faster particle, and you can again see there is a special heterogeneity in the mobility. Okay, so we move on to the next uh, topic, which is uh, what is the motivation of our uh, model, which is active glass. So um, uh, first I talked about active matter. So the obvious thing is, People may ask, does the active matter show similar kind of behavior like a passive matter? So does they undergo transitions? 
like this. So, uh, can the active system form crystal? And the answer is yes. In low density, you can see they are not forming crystal. At high density, they are forming crystals. But this is not like passive crystals. They are active or living crystals, and they have funny behavior. So, similarly, one can ask if the active system can form glass. And the answer is again yes. And if you look at biological uh, systems across different length scales, like from one micrometer a bacteria to a 10 millimeter frog, you can see glass like behavior. I will not go into the details of these experiments, but I will just flash the results. For example, in bacteria, you can see caging and caging behavior in the absence and presence of activity. Similarly, inside the cell nucleus, which is at a different scale. Uh, again, if you look at the tissue, which is at a different scale, you can see dynamical heterogeneity. So, this is the dynamical heterogeneity plot of this tissue, and this is from a passive glass, and the dynamical heterogeneity, I mean, they are not the same, but it looks similar that both of the system are having dynamical heterogeneity. And now, this is a frog, and uh, in winter it freezes and becomes a glass, <coughs> and uh, in summer it melts and becomes a frog. So <laughs> Question? <laughs> okay. So, um, so the thing is, what I'm trying to mention is, uh, or trying to um, claim is that the glassy behavior can be seen in different length scale of biological systems. But our aim is not to explain something like this because these are too complicated. So, our motivation is very modest, just to study a very simple glass forming liquid and what is the effect of incorporating activity or cell propulsion dynamics. And we will ask how the phase diagram will look like, is there any difference between active glass and passive glass, etc. So, any question up to this point? No. So, Before going to the model, I will describe the zeroth level model, which is Cobb-Anderson glass, uh, which is a mixture of A T20 and B particles, and the particles are interacting through Lennard-Jones interaction, and the parameters are here. And this system has a glass transition temperature, VFT temperature around 0.3 and fragility 0.26. So, the thing is, it's a binary fragile glass format in 3D. So we took this glass and in the B particle, we put some kind of propulsion force. How we put the propulsion force? So, for each B particle, it, it has a propulsion force in a particular direction for a time tau p, and after tau p, we change the direction, and again after tau p, we change the direction. So, we have three parameters to change. One is uh, propulsion force, another is persistence time, and third is temperature. So, at this point, I should mention that this is the temperature of a heat bath with which the system is coupled to because when we put the propulsion force the system is out of equilibrium. So, we cannot define a temperature for this system, but you can think of this temperature as the thermal fluctuation each particle is having apart from active fluctuation which has a persistence time tau p. Uh, so, after so for this model, so this was a very simple toy count kind, kind of model. So, for this model we st uh, studied discrete set of theta in which it can, but yeah. If you put some kind of rotational diffusion in the direction, this also will show similar behavior. So, um, we have three parameters F naught tau p and t, but we keep tau p constant for all the result I will show, and we vary only F naught and t. So, these are the results. So, for example, if you look at time scale versus temperature, so this is like the similar kind of plot I showed you earlier. Uh, without any activity, it diverges at some point, this sin 1. Now, uh, at some activity, if you look at the graph, the time scale changes and it diverges, but at some other point. That means the glass transition temperature is changing. So, these are the points where we did the simulation without any activity, and this is the extrapolated transition point, which is around 0.3, and then these green dots are all those points, which is extrapolated from this data, which is blue points, and the black line here, which is the, which is, which looks like a quadratic line can be rationalized from a very simple calculation that the phase and the transition temperature with increasing activity how it should change. So, it has a quadratic form and it fits well. So, this means that 
at very low temperature and low activity one has a glass like phase and if you increase temperature or activity you can go to a liquid like phase. Uh, what happens else? So, uh, if you look at the tau alpha versus temperature for the passive system this is a red set of data points and it has a fragility of say 0.3, uh, 0.26 or something. Then with increasing activity one can see that it is going to a strong glass and the fragility is decreasing. So, that is another observation and we saw in, uh, in some experiments that these are experiments with cells in different biological condition and this is a plot of time scale for a hard sphere. And the observation is that the fragility is higher for hard sphere and is less for the cells. That means, the cells are sort of more stronger glass compared to a hard sphere glass system. Now, again I will say that when I talk about cells there can be many factors. So, I am not claiming that this decrease this huge amount of decrease in fragility is only because of the amount of activity, but this can be one of the features of this system that when you increase activity the fragility decreases. So, there are other results that I will not go into the detail. So, the main thing we learned from this model is that activity decreases the glass transition temperature of a passive glass former uh, and activity also decreases the fragility and makes it a stronger glass. So, this is another model that we studied which is active dumbbells in 2D. So, here we have a 50 50 mixture and these are again Leonard Jones particles, but they are coupled by a spring and the spring constant is so high that you can consider them as to be almost a rigid dumbbell and then we pack it uh, very well that is it is a very dense mixture and in this system also you have different parameters like propulsion force because each of them are being propelled along the long axis of the dumbbell. So, if two dumbbell comes and collide they can change the direction of their propulsion. So, the persistence mechanism is coming because of collision which can be effect of thermal fluctuation or uh, propulsion force or uh, I mean only thermal fluctuation also can decorrelate their orientation. That is why the effective persistence time in the propulsion direction uh, is a function of f and t. f is the propulsion force and t is the temperature. So, we have only two uh, two parameters which is propulsion force and temperature. Now, again we look at uh, similar kind of behavior like for example, if you are at very low temperature and there is no propulsion force you are in a glass like phase, but at the same temperature if you increase the activity beyond certain point you see that the system become fluidized. That means, the phase diagram again looks like this that at low temperature low activity you have glass like phase and high temperature high activity you have a liquid like phase, but the difference with the earlier model is this that in the earlier model you have only one kind of glass transition which is translational glass transition. Here each object can rotate. So, we have both rotational and translational glass transition. So, the green region is the uh, regime of parameters where both rotation and translation freezes. In the blue region only translation freezes, but it can still rotate and in the this region both can uh, relax. And similarly if you look at the fragility of these two transition you can see that with increasing activity the fragility decreases of both the behavior. I think uh, these are not very interesting results because these are almost like the results that I got for the Friedrich uh, Cobb-Anderson active glass. Then we looked at what happens along this line because so this is the supercooled re regime and this is the isotau alpha line. So is the behavior around here, which is very thermal, is similar to uh, where it is very uh, non-equilibrium dynamics is happening? It's not at all thermal. So is the behavior similar? So, we did a simulation say around this point and this is the movie of the dumbbells. I plotted them as arrows and you can see there are large scale motions happening and here I have plotted the displacement fields. And if you look at the displacement fields, you can see they are forming swirls and vortex like structure which is not which are not very regular, but they have a length scale that one can measure. Then uh, we moved along this line and did simulation on this green points and asked how the length scale changes along this line. So, here I have a plot. So, I have defined Peclet number which is f sigma by k b t. So, at the thermal completely thermal regime f is 0. So, Peclet number is 0 and here it is infinity. So, we converted it to another function which is exponential of 1 minus square root of Peclet number and this function goes from 0 to 1. And as a as a function of this number if we move along this line one can see that the correlation length changes abruptly along uh, at some point. So, clearly there is a crossover from a passive 
supercooled liquid to active supercooled liquid. That means the liquid, the behavior of the liquid around here is completely different from the behavior of the liquid around here. And I have plotted the displacement field movies and you can clearly see that the li liquid, the structure of the displacement fields are completely different. So uh, from this one can say, okay, if I am here, I will expect some finite size of the vortex. Now uh, we asked another question that if you reduce the temperature and you approach the glass transition, you know what happens because there are many simulations. So the number fluctuation, uh, I mean, uh, right, so uh, probably one cannot see giant number fluctuation kind of thing because they are very dense. So the number fluctuation is here. So like, like uh, this guy, Marchetti and people, they looked at uh, across the jamming transition, how the number fluctuation behaves. So if you start from a low uh, density, then uh, you will see that there is a intermediate regime where you will see giant number fluctuation then it gets suppressed because of jamming. So if you look at the density, this is not very different, but in terms of displacement field, it looks like this. Yes. How, how is this uh, the structure so meaning uh, pair correlation function. Yeah. yeah, pair correlation function doesn't change much. So actually, uh, for the previous model, we put activity in the fraction of particles, and if I look at the pair correlation function of those particles, they change dramatically, but for here they doesn't change very much. I mean, not very drastically. I mean, even for uh, liquid to glass transition, they doesn't change much. So I should not say this is uh, less pronounced effect. But yes. Now the question is, uh, if you decrease the temperature and approach a glass, or if you decrease the activity and approach a glass, is the behavior similar? So one thing you can easily speculate that here you don't see a uh, swirling behavior. So you don't have a length scale which will increase along this line. But here you have a swirling behavior, so the length scale might change. And what we are seeing is exactly the, uh, this thing, that uh, when you approach along this line, that is at t equal to zero, you see that the correlation length increases along this line. And actually it shows a crossover from the behavior one minus square root of f minus f star to one minus f minus f star, where f star is the transition point. And so these are the movies of the displacement field. This is at the highest activity and you can see that the swirls are smaller. And as you are approaching the glass, the swirls are becoming bigger. That means uh, the correlated motions are getting bigger and bigger. And that can be associated with the slowing down of the system. So this, this might be a new relevant length scale for active glasses, uh, which is a growing length scale. And this might be the reason for the system to become slow because to have excitation of this size, uh, the system has to wait for a long time. Now, if you look at the dynamical heterogeneity, that also looks different, we have not done any quantitative analysis, but this is the velocity field and the curl field, and this is for the active case, this is for the passive case, and corresponding dynamical heterogeneity, that is, that is the first particles are plotted by blue, so slowest particle are plotted by red. So the slow particles are residing within the core of the vortex, and the first particles, if I just try to plot them, so if we have to counter rotating vortex, the first particles are lying here, and the slow particles are remaining somewhere here. Yes. So what did we learn from this model? This, that the active and passive supercooled liquid are very different in nature. We found a new growing length scale which is relevant for active glass because in passive glass there is no length scale, uh, which looks like this. And the nature of the dynamical heterogeneity is also different, but uh, I mean, we have not done any analysis, so I mean, we cannot say that why this is different, but it looks different. So let me come to the conclusion. So like studying these two models, I can say that the activity, in both this model activity reduces the glass transition temperature. It makes the glass stronger or less fragile, and the active and passive supercooled liquids are also very different. And there is growing length scale, dynamic heterogeneity is different, many other things. But the main message I want to convey is that active glass uh, and the corresponding transition is very different from a passive glass and the corresponding transition. That's my opinion. So these are the references. Thank you for your attention. And best wishes to Chandan and HRK. Observations about the fragility. Uh, I just want to sort of mention another result where we look at systems where we 
we, we sort of change the bond breaking time. And as you make the bond breaking larger, the, the time scale larger, you, you begin to see more what looks like more strong behavior. Uh, and there, in some sense, you're actually compressing the, 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 the temperature scale mm -hmm. effectively to higher values. Uh, shifting. Okay. So okay. You, you sort of, and therefore, you, the... The debility becomes slower. Uh, whereas here, you, you're actually doing it going in the other direction, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, in, in our case, um, there's something we can measure, like we can look at configurational entropy, how much it changes, and sort of quantify what is the, the effective temperature scale we are able to probe, right, for the different. Now, is there something like that that you can do here where you're changing the activity? You can sort of assign somehow a range in the passive case that you're, you're probing. Like, you, can you look at structure? Can you quantify? Or a, a structural based entropy uh, for uh, something like that. So you try it. But I'm not sure. But so if I go to this. So here, uh, this behavior actually can be rationalized uh, using the idea that uh, so the transition temperature that one gets at the presence of activity is effectively the transition temperature without activity minus. So then at each point uh, of temperature and activity, one can define effective temperature. But uh, I think this view uh, might not be correct in different models because uh, so if this view is correct, then we say that that effective, same effective temperature, the system should behave similarly. Now, uh, when we are moving along this line, so the relaxation time is almost similar. So it's like that they have same effective temperature. But the behavior of the liquidity around here and here completely different. So I'm not sure how far. Yeah, there were some uh, some arguments about uh, how the configurational entropy is supposed to change when you put in some activity. And uh, those arguments, in particular, one of our colleagues doesn't like a active temp effective temperature. Madan Rao doesn't like it. So. <laughs> So I have several questions. Uh, one is uh, in the first model, yeah. why do you make only part of the particle active and what happens if you make all of them active? Yeah, so uh, if we make all of them active, effectively what will happen is that the amount of activity will increase. So I have a plot here. So for example, uh, here we have changed the number fraction of active particles and one can see that there is a parameter which is rho a f naught square and tau p. So if you keep this quantity sort of constant, then the behavior is similar. So you can make all the particles active, then the reduce the amount of activity, you can have similar behavior. But this doesn't hold for the whole phase diagram, but one can rationalize the effect of increasing the number of active particles from this one. Okay. And so, and another motivation is, another motivation is this. So we started to look at the problem motivated by this experiment and, and we think that when the metabolic activity start taking place and the system goes from a glass-like state to liquid-like state, so all the particles are not active. So there are maybe few active particles which are pushing the system uh, to an active, um, active fluid state. So that's why taking all the particles active is not a very one can do in terms of modeling anything. So. Okay, then I have a second question, which is how do you understand your result as compared to the simulation by uh, Berthier, where essentially the message was that in some sense the system is warmer because you're active, but in some sense also it's cooler. So um, let me precise the idea is that at short time, mm -hmm. because you're active, you spend a lot of time close to your neighbors because of the persistence of your motion, and so you are really slow. And then at long time, indeed, because you're active, you explore more space, and so you are really fast. So that nowhere you can map the system with, a t with an effective temperature. And that was really the main conclusion. So what here makes the story different? Yeah, right. So uh, that's what I was uh, telling to Srikant, that if you look at this phase diagram, so only for a small region, you can do this scaling and 
put the idea of effective temperature. But uh, so what we try to de, uh, do is that uh, we try to look at uh, effective temperature definition both from the position like variable and velocity like variable. And you can see that the definition of effective temperature are not same. So if you look at the velocity fluctuation and the contribution of the active noise in that and the effective temperature if you extract from that is different from the effective temperature you extract from position like variable. Yes, so but independently from this definition of the effective temperature, if you're looking at the dynamics that is typically at the MSD, if you look at the mean square displacement, they don't order the same way with respect to the activity on the short time and on the long time. Okay. So they, they cross actually. Yeah. So there is no, a non monotonic dependence. So, so this behavior is only for the long time. Yeah. I. And just now you mentioned that if we make all the particles active, it's going to be like you just can have to reduce the activity and it would be very similar, right? Uh, so at least within a regime. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, because the formula doesn't hold for the whole, whole phase diagram. So this clustering effect of active particles will, be, will play no role in that case, uh, so the, right? So actually the clustering effect, if you look at, for example, in this simulation, so we only made the B particles active. Right. And if you look at the cluster size distribution, the change is very small. I mean, there is some kind of effect, but the parameters in the Cobb-Anderson model are already chosen in such a way that even with high activity, you cannot have large length scale structure of B particles and A particles. So, I mean, clustering. But your GR changes a lot, right? Yeah, but for the same data, you can see that the average cluster size of B particles going from 1.1 .1 to 1.4 or something. Question. So, uh, I mean, uh, is there an experiment where, like, uh, one has uh, seen in active systems, uh, like a diverging time scale? Uh, yeah, is there an experiment? <laughs> is, is, there, is there an experiment? Active matter and glass. So. Is there an experiment where, uh, in an active system, one has seen this kind of a, uh, like a diverging time scale and a glass transition? So we, we start doing this, uh, so we, have, we start to have some evidence of this, but it's really an ongoing process because we have first focused on the active crystal, so because at least we had a reference. Now we have the by disperse, and so uh, there, it's really running, so uh, I hope to be able to give you uh, more precise answers in a few months. I guess we thank uh, Rituparno.